Hello, hello, and welcome to the Mad Knitting YouTube channel. My name is Susan, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin, where it's unseasonably warm as it has been for most of the winter. Uh, today is March the 7th, 2024. So spring is coming, kind of feels like spring is here. I've got flowers coming up way early like there were tulips and daffodils starting to poke through the soil like a couple of weeks ago which is kind of alarming actually um but there you have it you can find me elsewhere online as madtown mama on ravelry and madtown underscore mama on instagram today i have just kind of a standard episode for you um, my recent episodes have been running pretty long and I'm trying not to let that happen. Um, so I have a couple of finished things to show you, a few works in progress, and then we'll be on our way. Um, I'm wearing, by the way, um, I've worn this on the, um, channel before. It's called Plum Wine. It's a cardigan by Thea Coleman. And I've had it, I think I made this about 10 years ago. I've had it for a long time. And um, I love it. It's made out of Cascade 220. And it's not without pills, but it's held up quite well, all things considered, since this is a piece that I pick up and throw on pretty frequently. It's a very good layering piece. Um, one of the reasons I like it so much is that it fits so well at the top. I think the construction has you go in one piece from the bottom up and do the shoulder shaping and have what have you, um, and then pick up stitches around the sleeve cap and do some short rows to shape it before you head down. So it just fits very, very nicely. I've always really liked this sweater. This was a test knit back in the day. I don't really do test knitting anymore. Um, Thea is the only person I've ever test knit for, and she has quite a large pool of people she can call on to do this by now. And it's just, when I started testing for her, like, I don't know, at least 15 years ago, um, it was a good time in my life to do that. I had small children at home. I did not have much of an outlet or way to connect with the outside world. Um, as young mothers often do, I was having a lot of questions about, you know, what was my new role and my identity in the world as an adult and... Um, even though test knitting is not a profession, it was a way for me to develop some skills outside of parenthood, outside of housekeeping, um, that just helped me feel more like a whole person. Um, I'm in a different place now. I have two teenage, well, my kids are now teenagers. One is 18 and about to leave the nest. My younger one is 16 and she's driving and, you know, life is just a little different now. Um, I've started a new career, I work full time from home, like I'm just in a different spot. So test knitting is not really, doesn't just, just doesn't fit in with that as well as it used to. Well, I did not mean to go on about that. <laughs> little ramble, little side tangent, but there we are. I have been thinking about test knitting some lately because you know, I made up a sock pattern like two years ago and I've talked about it on this channel before and I still have not figured out exactly what I want to do with that and how I want to deal with the test knitting. Um, it's still on the back burner. It's not something I can make a priority at this point, um, but it's hasn't totally left the building. It's, it's still there. It's still lurking in the corner. I'm just thinking about it. Part of it's because like test knitting has really changed since I last actually did it. Like social media has a much different role than it used to. Um, and there are a lot of different designers now that are very popular and just sort of the way the whole thing works with how you get selected and what the requirements are. I'm just still trying to sort it all out. So anyway. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I want to share the things that I have finished because I've actually finished some stuff and it's not socks. So that's gonna be a welcome change. The first thing I'm gonna share is a hat for my husband. 
And no, I haven't woven in the last ends, but I wanted to show this to you all. I'm a little short on time today and I wanted to show this here um, rather than take time to hide the ends. So the story behind this is that um, this is all, you know, unfolded here. Um, I really wanted to make my husband a very warm double layer hat. The pattern that I use or the concept, because I didn't really use a pattern for this one since the gauge is so different, but I'll show you. I've made so many of these. I'm like a broken record. Um, the pattern is from this book called Moon and Turtle, published by Pom Pom Press, which is no longer printing, sadly. Um, here's a picture of the original pattern. It's also on the back cover now that I think about it. It's called the Poca Poca hat. And it's a double layer hat. You start in the middle with a provisional cast on and do one half of it before you unpick the provisional cast on and do the other half. So it's a middle out hat. Um, in the original pattern, you do one layer in a very light fingering weight yarn and you do the other layer in a very fuzzy lace weight yarn like mohair silk. You could also use like a Surrey blend if you want. You can use whatever you want, but that's what they call for. Um, and I've made several of those and I really, really like them. However, um, I did a modified version earlier this winter using some like DK weight Icelandic yarn that's extremely warm, pretty rough actually, which is why I wanted to make it lined so that it would actually be wearable without being too scratchy. Um, and it was heavier weight yarn. So all I had to do to adapt the pattern was cast on fewer stitches. Um, I striped it cause I was using leftovers, but basically the one modification was using fewer stitches from the get go to get the circumference I wanted. So, um, the hat got finished right in the middle of the one and only cold snap with snow that we had in the middle of January. And my son immediately took it and claimed it because it was so warm and he liked the colors and now it's his. And my husband said a little bit wistfully that he would like a very nice warm lined hat too. Hence, I started this one. <laughs> So I didn't have any more of that Icelandic wool, but I wanted to make it extra warm. So for the outside layer, I mean, you can wear it however you want, but this will be the outside layer in all likelihood. I used Barocco, Al Barocco Ultra Alpaca in the worsted weight. So this is a 50-50 wool alpaca blend. Very warm, very drapey, very common basic yarn. I feel like there's a glare today and I apologize for that, but I think you can see the color. It's this lovely, I think it might be called Redwood Mix. It's a lovely kind of rusty orangish red with a lot of other darker colors heathered in it. And then for the inside layer, I used Classic Elite Fresco, which is much lighter weight, more like a light sport weight. Um, it's actually the same yarn I used for the inside layer of the hat that my son took. Um, but I just used bigger needles, so it's kind of a looser gauge and it seemed to work out. Um, so Classic Elite Fresco is a blend of Merino, Alpaca, and Angora. So it's very, very soft. It's also very, very warm and it doesn't wear very, like you, I made a pair of mittens once that are just, that just look trashed <laughs> pretty quickly. Um, so I wouldn't recommend this yarn which has been discontinued, but if you find a similar blend, I would be very careful about using it in any kind of project that will see a lot of wear. So a hat, you're not gonna see a lot of wear and friction. It's probably not gonna need to be washed very often. So it works very well for a hat lining. Um, now, the reason I still have markers in here is because I had a false finish uh, and I had to like take it out and add some more length. So I wanted to keep the markers in to show you just how that happened. So I already had a couple of false starts with this hat to begin with because I, even though I thought I knew my gauge and thought I had the stitch count right, 
Um, it took three tries to get a cast on that ended up with a circumference that was not just like huge. Um, my husband's head is bigger than mine, but it's also like a normal size head for an average size man. So once I got that worked out, I thought that I had made it plenty long for him to have like a nice brim that he could fold up over his ears. So I finished the one side and then I did the other side and then I had him try it on and like, it was just way too short. Like if he wore it without folding up the brim at all, it would have been fine, but that's not what he wanted. He wanted a hat where he could fold up the brim. And I was really annoyed with myself for not having made it the right size to begin with. And at that point I wasn't thinking very clearly and I thought, well, I can't fix it. Let me just find some more yarn and make another one because this will fit me or somebody. So I went ahead and like washed it and hung it up to dry. After it was like soaking wet and hanging up, I realized, oh, it's actually not that big of a deal to take this out and make it a little bit longer because of the way it's constructed. Because you do it from the middle out, if I needed to make the plain stockinette longer before starting the decreases, which is what I needed to do, all I had to do is take out the decreases at the top and rip out like the, just the crown here on both ends. So what I did was put a marker in where I knew I was going to have to rip back to. And then I added from here to about here. So that's a good two inches, maybe more like two and a half in length before I started the decreases. So that's why I kept the marker in to show you this end and this end. Of course, I had to do it on both ends. Um, and sure enough, it fits him great. It's enormous on me, which is, I think, where I made the mistake. I think I was working under the assumption that our heads are more similar in size than they actually are. Like, I think his is probably a good two inches bigger circumference, which means you need more length to accommodate for the stretching and for how much you need to flip it up on the brim. So, like, where this is absolutely huge on me, I mean, look at that. That's like really excessively big. This is not, it's warm, but it's not, you know, it's a little bit too big. It's quite a bit too big for me, but it works very well for him. So here we are. Of course, does he need an extra warm double thick hat that has lots of wool and alpaca and a little bit of Angora? No. Not right now, it's March and we've had the warmest winter on record, like except for that two weeks or 10 days or whatever it was in the middle of January, nobody's needed a hat this warm here. But eventually he'll want a super warm hat and when that time comes, he will have it. So it's done. That is my first finished object for today. My second finished object is also a gift. I've been mostly knitting for other people lately. Um, there's things that I want to make for myself, but I don't need anything. And there's all these birthdays and holidays and things that keep coming up. So that's how it is. All right, so I've showed this before and I'm so pleased that it's done. I think it's adorable. I love it. This is a sweater for my niece, for my older niece. She is about to turn eight eight years old um, and she told me recently that she really loves like this color lavender purple. So uh, when she told me that I decided that I would go ahead and make this sweater. I've had this yarn in my stash for a little while, had it in the back of my mind to make her a sweater out of it um, and I just decided now is the right time. So the pattern is called Little Abloom it's by Jessica McDonald. And the thing I like so much about it is this color work pattern on the yoke. I just think it's so pretty and delicate with the little flowers. Um, it was not as fun to knit this yoke as I would have liked, which was mostly, I think, due to my yarn choice. 
Um, but let me talk a little bit more about the pattern first. I have knit, this is the first sweater pattern that I have knit by Jessica McDonald. Um, I have several others of hers and I really like her approach to design and her aesthetic. It's just very, I just like it. Um, I don't know if this is maybe one of her earlier patterns, but I did have to make some adjustments because I noticed, first of all, that um, on other finished projects online, the neckline looked awfully wide. Um, I, this is a very, very lightweight yarn, very light gauge. So I think her idea is that this is a summer sweater or more of a warm weather sweater. So that wide neckline is probably um, intentional for that reason, but it just, it looked too big to me. So I cast on fewer stitches for the ribbing and then increased after the ribbing to accommodate that. And I think, you know, I wouldn't want this neckline any smaller to be, to be honest. Um, and the other thing I did was add short row shaping on the back, just above the color work and a little bit more on the bottom, just after the color work. Um, if you do it all in one place, it can kind of make a bubble. Um, and I didn't want my little niece to have neck boob. So I just, distributed a little more evenly. And I, I like how the, I think proportionally it looks fine. So hopefully it fits her. Um, yeah, so that's the only um, adjustment I did to the yoke in the neck. The other modification is just that I made the sleeves short because I wasn't gonna have enough yarn for long sleeves. Um, but it's such a light sweater. I mean, it really feels like a t-shirt that I think that's that works out really nicely. So this yarn, I have the leftovers in this little bag here. It's called Perlina. And I don't know anything about this brand that it's from. I got it on clearance from Webs a couple of years ago. Um, I have a collection of yarn that I have accumulated over a few years to make things for my nieces. Um, so if I see something I like that's on sale or something that in colors and that has the feel that I think they would like, I tend to collect it. Um, I sort of slowed down on that because at some point they'll age out <laughs> of wanting to wear hand knit sweaters and I've got plenty to keep me going for a while. Um, so this is something I got a few years ago and I realized if I didn't use it soon, then I wasn't going to have enough for any kind of sweater because children grow and I had bought this when they were smaller. Um, so yeah, so I think I had four skeins of this purple and there's like 250 yards per 50 grams. So it's very, very lightweight. I used size three needles for most of it. I always go up one needle size for color work. And then I went down to a two for all the ribbing. Um, and I was getting seven and a half stitches per inch gauge. So this is as much knitting as in a regular adult size sweater, I think, because of that. I love the feel of the fabric. It's very drapey and very smooth. Um, however, it is super wash yarn. It is, and this yarn is in particular is very slippery and I did not enjoy knitting the color work. I blocked the ever living daylights out of it so I soaked it thoroughly and when it was almost dry, I took a hot iron with a towel over top and like really steamed it to try to flatten this out. And even so, I think you can see it's not the most even looking. I think, you know, using smaller needles helps tighten up the stitches. I had to go up to size four for gauge to go with the rest of it. And it just, you know, there's just only so, so far you can go with that with superwash yarn. Um, so it was just, it was slippery. The other thing is that there are a few places where you've got some long floats, which isn't really that big of a deal, but um, it was enough that I did some ladder back jacquard in very, very short sections. I don't know if you can see, but like here, um, even if it's only for like, two rounds or three rounds. I prefer creating that extra stitch and having that ladder back jacquard 
than just wrapping the stitch in the back. Um, so when you have long floats, there are a couple of different things you can do. You can ignore it, which I will not do, especially for a child's sweater. I didn't want big loops that could get caught on something. You can just sort of twist the yarn in the back so that, um, like twist the two working yarns in the back so that you don't have a long float that is not caught. Um, when you do that, you risk it showing through on the other side. Or you can do ladder back to card, which is a technique where you create an extra stitch in the middle of that stretch of long stitches, um, work that extra stitch until you don't need to anymore, and you know until you have a few enough um, few enough stitches in a row in the color work that you can resolve it. Um, if I just try to describe the whole thing, I think it'll be confusing. But anyway, I will find some tutorial to link to in the description box in case you want to learn more. I really like the technique. I find it very easy to execute. And I think that it, you can, it's like invisible on the other side. You can't see it. So I'm a fan. Um, and I didn't really mind doing that. It was mostly the slipperiness of the yarn in the color work that I did not enjoy. Um, I think that's all I have to say about this. I do know that somebody had found, like when I mentioned that I was sure I was gonna run out of yarn for the sleeves, and I didn't know if I wanted to like use the contrast somehow to extend it or just make them short sleeves. Somebody had found extra online, which I, I appreciate the effort you took. I um, was just kind of ready for this to be done. And I think I like it with short sleeves. I think it looks nice. So this is ready to go. Um, I'm waiting to send it to her until a couple of books that I've ordered come in that I can include in the package because she is a voracious reader, which should not be surprising considering her parents and the rest of us in her family. So I always like to make something and find something to read when I give my nieces gifts for their birthdays and so forth. Okay, those are my only finished objects. Oh, but I wanted to show you, um, you know how I said I stock up on yarn for my nieces. I, when I bought the purple yarn, I also picked out colors for the other one because you know I've got two nieces in this family. Thinking maybe I would make coordinating sweaters. So what I have is more perlina, you know, the same yarn in pink and white. And I had originally thought maybe I would make a little a bloom in these colors for the younger one. Because and you know, like the pattern is fine. I know how to do the modifications that I like, uh, but because I disliked doing the color work so much, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm up for doing that again, even though this would be a smaller sweater for the younger one. Um, so I don't know, I might find something and just do stripes. Cause I, I do, these colors would be very sweet on her. Um, I'm yeah. I might do that. I might just wait a little bit because I think the younger one especially just, I don't know how often she wears hand knit sweaters. She's always moving. She runs pretty warm. Her birthday's in May, so that's not the best time to send hand knits. So I'm just still kind of thinking about that. But I have yarn, so who knows? Okay, um, I have three works in progress to show you. Two of them are socks, so let's start with those. Um, when I did my episode last week where I showed you some of my sock yarn, I know that I showed you three skeins of Knit Picks Hawthorne that are, um, designated for my son because as I said, he is 18 heading, he's graduating from high school, heading off to college next year and needs, I think, a lot more warm socks to keep his feet warm, okay? Um, and I showed you three skeins, but I didn't show you the actual yarn that I am now knitting socks for him with, I think, because it was wound up in somewhere else. So it's Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering. Here's the label. Slab Town is the name of the color I'm using. 
Um, he picked it out. I mean, he picked out all the yarn that I ordered, but when I was done with his most recent pair, I said, okay, which one should I do next? So I showed him all the skeins I had left and this is what he, this is what he picked. Um, so what I like about this is that if you look at it back here, it kind of reads brown. You know, it kind of reads as a nice sort of medium brown with some variegation. But when you look at it really closely, I don't know how well it's showing up here. If I can take another picture and pop it in, I will. Because I, th I think here it's probably showing up to you as just brown. But when you look at it, it's actually several shades of like a very dark muted purple, kind of a plum color. Um, variegated with some khaki and like a little bit of, I don't know, sort of shots of gold, like a very dark, dull gold. Um, I really like it. There's enough busyness and enough going on that it's good I'm not doing any special pattern because I think it would get lost. But I, I really like how it's, how it's working up. So uh, for this sock, as you can see, I am through, I've done the cuff, I've done the heel, and I'm part way through the gusset decreases. Um, this is a pattern I have done before that he really likes. He likes the feel of. So for the cuff, I do one by one rib. Oh, by the way, I use size one and a half needles with this yarn because it's a little thicker than the sock yarn I'm used to. And for his foot, for this, I cast on 66 stitches. Normally I would cast on 68, but in order for all the proportions to work out, I had to do 66. So one by one rib for the cuff. I continue with garter rib down the leg and I keep track of how many rounds I've done just by sticking these stitch markers in. For the heel, um, just because I like when the line of stitches continues down the heel, I find that very satisfying. I do a slip stitch heel and the column of knit stitches that goes all the way down, I continue as the slip stitches on the cuff. Um, and in order for that all to work out and be perfectly balanced and symmetrical, that's why I cast on 66 stitches instead of 68, because you work the heel across. So in the traditional sock construction that I use, you work the heel stitches across 50% of the total cast on, which means I have 33 stitches to work across the heel. Uh, which means that, you know, I take a couple off the sides to do a little garter ridge, which makes picking up for the gusset easier. And that left still leaves an odd number of stitches for the slip stitch pattern going down the back. Which means since it's an odd number of stitches, I am starting and ending with a knit stitch, which I find very satisfying. <laughs> It really bugs me if it's offset, like if you start with a knit and end with a purl, that just doesn't work for me for the heel. So that's what I did and it's working out nicely. Um, so I expect I'll get these done pretty quickly. I started this last Saturday. We had an orchestra concert to go to. Um, he's in the youth orchestra program, so we went. Um, to that and I need to keep my hands busy so I got started then and this is the progress I've made so far. So I'm definitely on track to keep up with my goal of doing a pair of socks once a month until either until he goes out of co to college in September or until I like run out of sock yarn that he's interested in whichever comes first. So that's the first work in progress. The second sock in progress it's another plain vanilla sock. I hope I'm not just boring you terribly. Um, the colors on this are fun. I started this a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember exactly where, probably some meeting. Um, and it's again, just plain, plain formula. Um, this is thinner sock yarn. I'm using size one needles. I cast on 68 stitches and I originally had this in mind for someone who's, um, who I, I always knit her birthday socks every year. Her birthday is later in the spring. 
But when my daughter saw me working on these, she said, ooh, I really like those colors. So these socks are now for my daughter, which is fine. I can always find something else to knit for, for this other person. Um, yeah, so not much else to say about this. I'm pretty far down on the foot. At some point, I'll have to start measuring her, either one of her other socks or have her try it on to make sure that the length is good. Um, but I'm just zipping right along. The yarn I'm using for this, I got this a while ago from Webs because they had a sale on it. It's their brand. So Webs, y'all, I don't really order from there anymore. Um, I used to, I used to fall for their sale prices quite often. Um, and they were a family owned business. I mean, they were large and had huge inventory, but they were family owned and the couple that owned them retired and they've sold it to this much larger craft conglomerate. And I'm less excited about spending my money there. But at the time that I got this, that was not the case. So this is called Huntington Splash. It's kind of ripped, but you get the idea from the label. And it's, it's just standard sock yarn. It's a 75, a blend of 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. This is black basically, but what I, the, the splash part is that it's shot through with these little streaks of color. And what I like so much about this particular colorway is that it just reminds me of the early 1990s, you know, when people would wear like black with neon highlights, you know, like a stripe down the sleeve or like biker shorts. Biker shorts were really in, even for people who weren't biking, where it'd be like a pair of black shorts and like a bright lime green or bright orange stripe down the side. And for some reason, this color made me think of that and I thought it would make a really fun pair of socks. And my daughter wears black all the time. So yeah, so these are for her. We'll see how they hold up. I haven't used this sock yarn before, but it, it feels nice. I think it's like pretty standard base. So that's my second work in progress. The third work in progress, I've showed this before. I was going gangbusters on it and then it went into hiatus and I just, I just really want to finish something for myself. So I've picked this back up again. It's the Porty Cardigan. It's by Gudrun Johnston. And I just, oh, she's originally from Shetland, you know, those islands in the northern part of Scotland. And she, um, or maybe it's one island. Is it one island or a group of islands? Anyway, that's where she grew up. Um, and she knits or she designs many, many things in that tradition and using the, the Shetland wool that, you, that comes from there. And I, uh, Adore the color work on this <laughs> and I just I need to finish it because I would like another sweater for myself so where I've made progress is on this first sleeve I think last time I showed it I was probably like up to here maybe and now it's a little longer um I am using the yarn I'm using is Barocco Lanis Light I've got a bunch of labels in here so I'll show you one of them they say it's sport weight I think it's more like fingering. Um, for 100 grams, you get 383 yards. And when I use a size three needle, I get the gauge that I really like, and that's seven stitches per inch. So I think I had something else planned for this until I swatched with it. And I was like, oh, this is not going to work for a sport weight gauge. Like, I don't like it that loose and airy. Um, so I went pattern hunting and ended up buying the Porty card again, and it's been really fun. I, the color work is really fun. Um, I have this foggy gray color for the main part, and there's a gold and a bright red, and this sort of robin's egg blue, and a maroon that's so dark it almost looks brown, and I just really love how they go together in the yoke. Um, because I'm doing the cardigan version of this sweater, there's a steak going down the middle. I think one of the reasons I've been putting off finishing this is because <laughs> I've never done a steaked project like this before. 
I'm going to learn a new technique for reinforcing it, which is all in the pattern. I just, you know, have to like work up the nerve and do it. Um, but I have tried it on, like I've pulled it on and it, it, it fits, fits me pretty well. So I'm very excited to have this done. Um, I think there's some color work you can do at the bottom of the sleeve if you want. And I think I will. I think that'll look really nice. Um, I opted to just leave the bottom of the sweater plain, but I think I'll add color work to the sleeve. So that's coming up soon. Hopefully I will have this done soon. I actually have a lot more of this yarn in other colors because I like it so much. Like, I think it'll just be a good staple yarn for me. Um, I like how it feels. I like how it feels to knit. I like how it looks. Um, and I actually have several more of Goodrin Johnston's patterns in my cart online, ready to go when, I'm, when I wanna make some more of these sweaters. So she has a number of designs, um, lots and lots of color work designs, but in particular like color work yoke sweaters at a fine gauge. And I like them all, so I might make several more. There's a pullover version of the Porty. There's another one called High Desert Yoke. Um, I feel like there's another one that I, I can't remember the name of. I'm not entirely sure. And then she has children's versions of the Porty cardigan and pullover, um, which I would love to make for my nieces. We'll see. We'll see if I ever do that. But anyway, so that's my knitting update for you. Thank you for joining me. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.